for those of you watching online and your first time or you've been with us, we want to thank you for making time to be with us. We know that you are in the presence of God wherever you are and that the presence of God will meet you. We're right there where you are and we want to thank you for making time to be here with us. Hallelujah. Like I was saying, we are blessed to have men of God tested, tried, and proven. They have won their shirts. They have gone through it and the Lord has proven them. Hallelujah. We are honored to have in our midst today men of God, well, a man of God that the Lord has got our, our paths to cross. And in so many ways, he has ministered to me as a person and has ministered to this ministry. He's no stranger to Faith Bible Church. He's been with us at some point, music minister par excellence, a pastor, a leader in the community. So I'm talking about no one other but Bishop Ed Belong. Hallelujah. Can we receive the servant of God? I want to talk to you this morning about purposed favor. Purposed favor. Favor that has a purpose. You see, we can all run around asking God for favor, wanting to receive favor from the Lord, or wanting to walk in the favor of God. But I have a few questions that I would like to ask you today. Because we see here that Nehemiah sought favor for a very specific purpose. Nehemiah sought favor for a very specific, somebody says specific, specific purpose. And the purpose was to rebuild the city of his ancestors. It was to rebuild Jerusalem. He did not just ask favor for nothing. There was a reason why he was looking for favor. There was a reason why he asked for favor. So the first question today is, what do I want favor for? You see, we are living in a time, an age where the church is flooded with all kinds of ideas. And if you are not you will get lost in all this commotion that is going on. And there is no direction in many, many of our lives, in many of our churches, there is very little direction as to why we want what we want. Why do you want favor? What do I want favor for? Come on, somebody say, what do I want favor for? What? Number two, why should God grant me favor? Ask yourself that question today. Why should God grant me favor? Why? Number three, what do I want to do? This is how, it's the same thing. But it's just the question you are asking from different angles. What do I want to do when I find favor? Or when favor finds me? What do I want to do? Listen to me. Nehemiah was taken to captivity in Babylon. They have been in captivity for so many years. After the kingdom of Israel has completely been destroyed. If you know history, you understand that there was a time, you know, between the let me say, from the time of King Saul, Saul was the first king. Saul was the first king. It was never the plan of God for them to have a king to begin with. But they asked God for a king. So Saul became their king and the kingdom was together. And then after Saul, obviously you know, came who? David. And the kingdom was also okay. Sort of okay. Then the third person was Solomon, and the king was also okay. But after the death of Solomon, there was a split. So we had a northern kingdom and a southern kingdom. And the northern kingdom was ten tribes of Israel, ten. 
And they were all wicked people. Wicked kings. I'm not going to bore you with a lot of stories today, but it's important to give you that background a little bit. All bad kings. That is where you hear about the Ahabs of this world. That's where they lived. And because of the wickedness, they were completely finished. They were finished. And the southern kingdom was better. And much of what we know today about Christianity is actually from the southern, southern kingdom. Because that is where Jerusalem was. That is where the temple was. But there came a time also even when even the, the, the southern kingdom began to do all kinds of stuff. And that is how they were taken into captivity. That's why I'm giving you the background so you can understand. They were taken out of Jerusalem. Everything was destroyed. Everybody was taken away in captivity. Dan, you remember Daniel? Daniel was taken in captivity. He was a young boy. Probably 17 years of age. With Adrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They were all taken into captivity in Babylon. They have been there for many years. And Jerusalem was destroyed. And Nehemiah, the prophet of God, is serving in Babylon. And then he becomes sad. Why? Because every time people came from Jerusalem, Nehemiah will always inquire about what is taking place back home. And every time he asks, they tell him everything is destroyed. Everything is down. Everything is scattered. And he was sad. Even though he was in the palace, he was sad. Because when you are a visionary, it doesn't matter where you live. The vision will condition your mind. When you are not a visionary, you enjoy every little thing. You just enjoy the moment. Wherever you are is what you enjoy. But visionaries can be in the best place. If where they come from is not okay, they will never sleep. And because of that, Nehemiah was sad in his heart. But he was not sick physically. But his sadness of the heart could be visible on his face. The sadness of the heart was visible on his face. And the king could see that this guy is not okay. He said to him, what is wrong with you? Why are you so sad? Why are you sad? And you are not ill. Well, how can I not be sad? How can I not be sad when, when the city where my fathers are buried is in ruin? How can I not be sad? I must be sad. Even though I've got the best food in the palace, I must be sad. There is no juice from the palace that can put a smile on my face. Is somebody hearing me this morning? Ask the person, are you listening to me? So, the king asked him, what do you want? What do you want? The king asked, what do you want? And he said, if I find favor in your eyes, then send me. Help me out. I want to go back and rebuild what has been destroyed. The reason why I'm looking for favor is not so that I can just sing about favor. I'm looking for favor because I want to rebuild something that has been broken down. Purpose favor. And because his favor was purpose, because there was a reason, a well-defined reason for that. When you read the story of, of Nehemiah, you will see that he got favor and favor in abundance. I'm not going to go through all of that story. But please go read it yourself. You will see he got favor. He got money to rebuild things. He got logs and wood and he got builders. He got everything. Everything you're looking for, you will get it. But it must have purpose. What do you want money for? 
as the person next to you, what do you want money for? What do you want favor for? It just because, is, it, is it just because it's a season of favor? You know, I have been in this thing for so many years. I noticed that, you know, you can be in a church where people are talking about favor and we're all singing about favor, but you don't really know. What do you want favor for? You just, you just feel like, okay, the pastor said it's a season for favor. Oh, I'm going to get favor. And wherever favor takes me, that's where I'm going. Now, that is the most dangerous position to have to say that I don't know what I need favor for, but I just want favor so favor can decide where I'm going. And I tell you, many people are like that in the church. We just want favor, and favor will tell us where we're going. But it is better for you to know where you want to go to. 